Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown, the unofficial sumo podcast for official sumo fans. I can't tell you how much I am desperately looking forward to this. (laughs) (laughs) With that being said, then, why wait any longer? Welcome to Grand Sumo Breakdown. This is Ryan. Was that your wife? I'm guessing. <laughs> no. I, otherwise, she'll be I don't honored to think. She'll be honored to hear that's that was your first thought. I I didn't know if that was like you were proud of her for like a mega pregnancy birth or something or. <laughs> no, Just trying to figure out what that was. No. My me and my brothers have a group chat, and he sent me this of him burping. And uh, you mentioned you were prepared. I saw the length of your outline, and I needed to also prepare. So I had I just had to have this ready just in case you know. If, if you go too long, this will be like the music turning on at the Oscars. <laughs> <laughs> well, prepare for that quite a bit, I think, because <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna make me ugly laugh every single time. <laughs> That is awful. It immediately makes me want to. Yeah, it's the worst thing I've ever heard in my life. All right, go ahead. All right. (laughs) Uh, No, you have a plug for something real quick. Oh, that's right, I do. Um, uh, For Amateur Sumo, there's actually a really cool new tool for you, uh, sumo411.com. This is a website put together by Kellyanne out of uh, California. It is sumo number four, number one, number one dot com. There's now just one place with a calendar and all the stuff on it, which I know sounds ridiculous. Like, why would anyone actually do that? Right. (laughs) Who could possibly get any use out of that? Right. It's the kind of thing that, you know, just leave that, leave that to the national federation. That's the kind of thing for them to do. Right. You promised this would be quick. Yeah. I have a lot of bots to do before your (laughs) supposed go to that website rather than listen to me. There will be uh, end of the year amateur sumo uh, coverage coming up. But until then, uh, go ahead, Ryan. I'll get the burp ready again. Okay. Uh, So (laughs) my opening line that I wrote before anything on the outline was what a goddamn clusterfuck. I would I would say strap in folks this could take a while but we'll see what what Jake allows. Um we're going <laughs> we're going to we're going to get the easy shit out of the way first. So at Yokozuna, we're going to have Terano Fuji, uh, uh-huh. despite his injury, nothing's going to happen to him. At Ozeki, we were going to have Takakesho as the sole Ozeki on the Bonske. He's going to slide over to the west side to balance out Terano Fuji who is already on the east side of the Bonske and if you happen to pick up a physical copy of this Bonds K, uh, you'll notice that Taro no Fuji will be written as a Yokozuna Ozeki, uh, as the Bonds K requires two Ozeki, and as I just mentioned, we only have one, so the Yokozuna will fill the role as Ozeki. This does nothing to affect uh, Taro no Fuji's actual rank or any matches or anything in the Basho should Taro no Fuji compete. It's merely an administrative thing, basically. Yeah, it, nothing requires it. They just like... Yeah, like <laughs> people always say like the Bonske requires two Ozeki, two Sekiwake, two Komosubi. And like, I, I always repeat that because that's what they say. But in the back of my mind, I'm like, or what? <laughs> Yeah, like, yeah. Like, what <laughs> happens if there's not two Ozeki? Like, does Grand Sumo cease to exist? Yeah, is it is it like a divide by zero thing, or is this like yeah. the only thing keeping interdimensional beasts at bay, or something? Like the the no, Kabuki Kai collapses <laughs> upon itself and becomes a black hole. If yeah, there is less than two Ozeki on a Bonske. Exactly. All right, so that was the easy stuff. Uh, now, cool. All right, <laughs> now we get to go into my three-page diatribe. Uh, so, Ooh. yeah, here, this is a is... this is a ten-page document, three of which are on the Sekiwake rank. Well, that's because I have to go through so many things before we can even start placing Sekiwake. Yeah, so, and you have six different predictions listed on your prediction sheet. Yes, I, I have gone yeah. through many many variations. So. Uh, we we're running into a logjam 
uh, the likes of which I don't think Subo has ever seen at the top of the bonds K. So what we are currently <laughs> looking at is there are six Rikshi that deserve to be ranked at Sekiwake uh, based on our promotion math. Those being current Sekiwake, Wakataka Kage, and Hoshoryu, the demoted Ozeki Shodai, and then Takayasu, Kiribayama, Kotonowaka all had records that would be normally good enough to get them up to the Sekiwake rank. This isn't unusual for us recently. We've had quite a few Bonds case with like six or seven people that deserve to be Sekiwake. Uh, there are a further three Rikshi that deserve the rank of Komosubi, those being Meisei, Wakamoto Haru, and Abi. So that is nine people who deserve to be in the lower Sanyaku ranks, and we currently have seven people in the lower Sanyaku ranks, and there are seven Sanyaku ranks kind of available on the bonds K at this time not everybody's gonna make it that is fine some people will be snubbed and they'll end up at the upper migashira ranks we've been doing many iterations of this all year but the issue becomes where do those people that belong in the sanyaka ranks where do they go because there aren't any openings in the upper Maigashira ranks. We have three more Rikshi that deserve to be ranked Maigashira 1, Mitaki Yumi, Tobizaru, Daesho, all three guys that are dropping out of the Sanyaku ranks. We have another three that deserve to be ranked Maigashira 2, Tamawashi dropping from the Sanyaku ranks, and then Midori Fuji and Nishiki Fuji, and then another two that deserve to be ranked Maigashira 3 in Sada no Umi and Ryuden. That means we have 17 Rikshi that deserve to be in the ranks of Sekiwake through Maigashira 3, where traditionally only 10 Rikshi end up there. And like I said, on previous Bonds case, having 9 or 10 guys that deserve to be in the Sanyaku ranks isn't an issue because then you have a gulf of people that don't deserve to belong at the Maigashira 1, Maigashira 2 ranks. So yeah. we can just fill that out. This Bonds case is very different. We don't have that luxury. We have – so depending on how many Sanyaku slight – slots there are going to be there could which there could be anywhere between five to eight sanyaku slots open that means somewhere between three to six rikshi will be under demoted and over demoted in this range and some severely so so between how many sanyaku slots there are going to be which there's predictions all over the place there's two main contenders but i could honestly see four options for how many sanyaku rikshi we have um there's possibility of Rikshi with eight and seven records not being promoted. Um, if you went real strict with the Sanyaku ranks, maybe you're even playing around with not promoting nine and six records. Uh, and <laughs> then there's just muddled priority for who deserves to be ahead of who. Does Wakamoto Haru deserve to be ahead of Abi? Deserve to be ahead of Mitaki Yumi? There's just a whole lot of question marks. And this is by far and away the messiest bonds K I've ever had to try to put together. And I have <laughs> like somehow this is worse than the COVID madness bonds K just two Bashos later. This, this already tops the COVID one. Uh, <laughs> and I have less certainty in this one than I did for that one. And I don't, I don't know that any, like nobody knows what's going to happen with this one. It's absolutely crazy. So we just need to, figure out how many Sanyaku ranks are we going to have? So we know there's a minimum of five lower Sanyaku slots available. The three Sekiwake with Shodai being demoted from Ozeki, and then a minimum of two Komosubi uh, that the Botsuke has to have, or else the Kokuki Khan collapses in upon itself and becomes a black hole. Right. And I think um, it's, it's worth noting here that that third Sekiwake slot is a guarantee uh, at least a third, uh, because yes. every single time an Ozeki drops down out of Ozeki, they are always a Sekiwake 2. Um, no. No. No? They, when else? No. If, say, like, Wakataka Kage had a winning record, Hoshoryu had a losing record, then Shodai would just oh, fill that Sekiwake. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. So if if neither Sekiwake that's already there is getting demoted, yeah, maybe I should phrase it as Shodai will always be a Sekiwake. When yes. he's dropping out of Ozeki. But yep. because there are two guys that deserve to stay exactly where they're at, it's Can't a guarantee. That, that, that is the one thing about the abnormal Sanyaku ranks that is a for sure thing, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. We know that there's going to be three Sekiwake unless the Bonsuke committee's really feeling hard up for Ozeki and they're like, you know what, Hoshoryu? Go ahead, take it. You're way under. The... <laughs> it's not going to happen. So yeah, three Sekiwake. 
I feel like least. we'd already know that by this point, though, wouldn't we? Yes, we would. That's a very good point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So let, let's let's explore the possibility of us creating the bots gate with just five lower Sanyaku ranks. How does it shake out? So there's some pluses to this. Um, oh, and I'm going to go through this prediction. Assuming eight and seven records are not frozen, everybody with a winning record at least gets some sort of promotion. So the pluses to this, at least in my opinion, no one gets promoted to Sekiwake or Komusubi that traditionally would not be. Um, so based on the ranks and records that everybody's had, Takayasu would fill the open Komusubi slot as there were four Komusubi, three had losing records, so three are going to drop out, leaving. If we're not creating extra Komusubi slots, uh, there would be one opening for Takayasu, and he's the obvious one to take that. Kitabayama will remain at Komusubi, we assume, after an eight and seven record. Okay, so reread through our Seki or our Sanyaku in that in that instance. So if we have only five Sanyaku Rikshi, it'd be Wakataka Kage, Hoshoryu, Shodai, Kiribayama, Takayasu in your Sanyaku ranks. Gotcha. So Wakataka Kage, Hoshoryu, Shodai, all guaranteed to be Sekiwake. Kiribayama guaranteed to be no worse than Komasubi. Yeah. All five of these guys, guaranteed, they're going to be in the Sanyaku next Basho. No way around it. So you could debate maybe Koto Nawaka deserves to create an extra Komasubi slot. He was 9-6 and six from Magashira 1 West. Based on recent precedent, that is not good enough to create a new Sekiwake slot. The past two or three times that we've seen a Magashira 1 West with a 9-6 and six record, they only slit, and there weren't any available uh, Sanyaku slots, they just slid over to Magashira 1 East. So that's a benefit of this one. We're not promoting anybody we wouldn't. Meisei, if Koto Nawaka is not getting promoted, then Meisei isn't going to be prom promoted because Meisei had the same record as Koto Nawaka from a lower rank. Some people think Meisei is in line for a uh, Sanyaku Komosubi slot because he had a 9-6 and six record for Magashira 2. Wakamoto Haru, other people are talking about him for a possible Sanyaku slot. And if we expand, possibly for him. Uh, Kiribayama, but that wouldn't happen under unless we had dire circumstances because Kiribayama went 10 and 5 from Maigashira 4, just like Wakamoto Haru just did. And he only ended up to Maigashira 2 when there's a log jam and nowhere else for him to go. And then also outside shot, maybe Abi could force open a Komosubi slot. He just won a U show for Maigashira 9, but we saw back in 2018 when Asanoyama won his U show from the Maigashira 8 rank, he did not create a new Komosubi slot. So precedent is telling us there should only be five Sanyaku slots in this Basho. Uh, and if there weren't some extremely unlikely or just overly harsh scenarios that play out, uh, if this was the number of Sanyaku, Sanyakshu Rikshi, this is what I would predict. This is what I would go with. But I'm going to tell you why I don't think that can happen. Well, yeah, I mean, it sounds good when you say this guy would traditionally be in the Sanyaku. This guy would traditionally not be. Hooray, we've completed a Sanyaku. And now all of a sudden we got 12 guys that deserve to be one rank so, under, right? Is yeah, that kind of so where we're going? <laughs> so let's see what happens if we play that through. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> so to ensure that everybody gets a promotion, uh, that would mean Koto Nawaka and Meisei would need to slide up to fill the Maigashira 1 East and West slots. Uh, and then that means Tobizaru and Daesho both drop to Maigashira 2. Uh, traditionally, your Komosubi dropping after a 7 and 8 record, they're going to take that Maigashira 1 spot. It has happened where they've dropped to Maigashira 2. It wouldn't be without precedent. It would be forced here. So, okay, that's fine. We're not we're not mad yet. Um, so we've got Magashira 1, Magashira 2 filled. Then Midori Fuji, Wakamoto Haru, and Sarada Umi all must be promoted by half a rank apiece here uh, because Midori Fuji was Magashira 3 West. Our next open spot is Magashira 3 East. So in order to get him a promotion, he has to go. And then the two guys behind him had winning records. And so they only have a half rank to move up. And that includes Wakamoto Haru, who would only move up a half rank after a 10 and 5 record. Oh, okay. That might be pushing it. <laughs> so now our next available slot to place anybody would be at Magashira 4. And I think this is the area where they would put a six and nine Mitaki Yumi dropping from the Sekiwake rank. 
That is important to note because a 6 and 9 Sekiwake hasn't fallen to Maegashira 4 in the modern era. The last time it happened was in 1944 before our current 15 days per Basho, 6 Basho per year format started. Uh, so it would be precedent setting if Mitaki Yumi were to do this. We keep going. Then Nishiki Fuji, Nishikigi, and Ryuden would all be next in line for promotions to make sure each one of them could get at least one half rank promotion. So that means our next open spot for anybody to take would be Maegashira 6 West. And then we're looking at guys like Abi, who went 12 and 3 for Maegashira 9, only moving up three ranks to go to Maegashira 6. Or we're looking at Tamawashi, who was 6 and 9 from Komosubi and would be dropping six ranks down to Maegashira 6. Maegashira 4 is the lowest the 6 and 9 Komosubi has dropped in the modern era, and that only happened once. It did happen within the past 10 years. I believe it was Tochi Noshin when I was looking it up. But that that would break precedent by two full ranks. And then whichever of Abi or Tamawashi wasn't placed at Maegashira 6 West, they would then land at Maegashira 7 West because we need to allow Miyogiryu to be promoted one half rank to Maegashira 7 East after an 8 and 7 record. So that would either be Tamawashi with a seven rank demotion after a six and nine record from the Sanyaku <laughs> ranks, or Abi with a two rank promotion after a 12 and three record from Maegashira nine. And then there's also just a ton of, oh, you actually, we're going to run into another log jam at the bottom of the Bonds K, which is very rare. Typically, we're desperately pulling guys up. This one, no, we're going to be over demoting people, even in the version I go with which isn't this one. Um, <laughs> but that situation, we're like demoting seven and eight records, like three and four ranks down at the bottom of the bonds. Okay, if this is what happens, not going to get into the full nice. details of that, but so that's the situation we're in, but Hey, we've seen in the past, the possibility of freezing people with eight and seven records. It doesn't happen often, but it has happened in the past. So what if we freeze the records of Midori Fuji, Sarana Umi, Nishikigi, and Miyogiryu? What does that do if we leave them at their previous rank? Turns out doesn't really do a whole lot. Um, Wakamoto Haru gets a half rank higher at Maegashira 3 East instead of Maegashira 3 West. Ryuden can jump ahead of Nishikigi, which he deserves after a 9-6 and six record from right behind Nishikigi's 8-7 and seven record. But Mitaki Yumi still set in precedent, ending up at Maegashira 4. Tamawashi and Abi would still end up at Maegashira 6 and 7. They'd just be on the east side instead of the west side. Uh, so mostly because of the combo of where Tamawashi and Abi would end up. I just – or maybe it isn't even those two. Maybe I've got the priority order of priorities mixed up. It would then be like Mitaki Yumi dropping down there. And if you're not dropping one of those three, then you're dropping somebody with a winning record. It it just there's too it's too ugly. It it doesn't work. I, I don't think you can do five Sanyaku Rikshi, despite the fact that my gut's telling me they just might be mega dicks and go with five Sanyaku Rikshi. <laughs> yeah. It's somehow mean to everyone at the same time if you do that. Absolutely, yeah everybody's mad which you know what that's fine that's sumo sometimes that's what happens uh but it, it's not impossible that i i'm usually all about like the bonds k committee isn't going to create another sanyaku slot just because it makes things easier further down the bonds k this is the first time where i'm like you've got to make extra sanyaku slots because it makes <laughs> things easier further down yeah. the bonds k yeah yeah but you gotta though <laughs> yeah you kind of have to you gotta you're, like you're not you're not really gonna demote a komosubi with a six and nine record to my six and seven are you <laughs> all right so five we're discounting that what about six let's say maybe maybe they get maybe they're feeling generous they give Takeyasu a promotion to the Sekiwake rank, or maybe they're nice to Koto Nawaka. They open up a Komosubi slot for him. Uh, but some way or form, we end up with six Rikshi in the lower Sanyaku. What what does this do? What does that change from the five Rikshi 
uh, scenario. So now there is room for one of the seven and eight Kobosubi and Tobizaro or Daisho to land at their traditional Magashira one spot. The other will still land at Magashira two, but hey, we can help one. Uh, Wakamoto Haru, he can jump up to Magashira two after his 10 and five record. Mitaki Yumi, he can land at Magashira three instead of Magashira four. And then it helps out the bottom of the Bonds K a bit more, still over demotions, but not as bad as it was. What it doesn't do, we still have Tamawashi or Abi landing at Maigashira 4. That's at like my edge of acceptable for either of those guys. But then you still have whichever one of those guys doesn't end up at Maigashira 4, he ends up at Maigashira 6. Uh, and so it's it's not as bad as Maigashira 7, but I still think that's just too harsh for one of these Rikshi. And if we're not doing that, then we're not promoting like Nishiki Fuji or Ryuden after nine and six records. And I just think that's got to be, that needs to be completely off the table. Yeah. I, I did want to address something real quick here that it is interesting to me how we're not spending, you know, an hour on each one of these versions of your prediction or anything like that. But I think it's yeah. interesting to me how just the number of Sanyaku slots available also affects the order. So it's not just moving everybody else up a half a rank because you have a new Komosubi. It's the the logic of like your number has to improve for doing well or dick or your number has to get worse for doing poorly. Yeah. And so some of these things like somehow Tamawashi and Abi were next to each other and now they're two ranks apart uh, just based on like, you know, what slots are open based on where somebody has to go. Yeah. Um, and yeah, this is this is a beast. Mm hmm. And, and same thing, if we're looking to uh, protect the eight and seven ranks, keep those frozen, uh, it just still hel helps guys only by a half rank. We still have the combination of Tamawashi, Abi, Mitaki, Yumi, whoever ending up at Maigashira 4, Maigashira 6. It just still being a step too far for me to really consider that realistic. Once again, unless we want to hold Nishiki Fuji, Nishiki Ryuden, uh, keep them all in their spot, and then we can move up like Abi to Magashira 4. But once again, I think not promoting somebody with a 9-6 to six record, that just needs to be off the table completely. So I'm not I, – I, I can't consider that. Sure. All right. So – fives out the window, six out the window. We don't we don't like how any of those sit with us. So now let let's live in a world where the Bonds K committee is thinking, you know what? We're in a pickle. We've got four Komosubi right now. So it's not really like we're opening up new spots for guys to enter. We're just kind of preserving the status quo. Uh so why don't we just leave those spots open and we'll have three Sekiwake and four Komosubi for the second consecutive Basho. So let's see, how does that help us out? So it in this situation, we're assuming Takeyasu stays at Komosubi, which is where recent precedent would have him land. It opens up a slot. So Kota Nawaka, our Komosubi would be Kiribayama Takeyasu, guaranteed Kota Nawaka. And then it opens up a slot for Meisei or Wakamoto Haru to join the Sanyaku, whichever one the Bonds Cake Committee thinks deserves it more. They're tied for where they deserve to end up. Um, then both Tobizaru, Daisho can land at Maigashira 1 rank, which is where we would expect a dropping Komosubi to be. Mitake Yumi can land at Maigashira 2, which is perfectly acceptable for a Sekiwake with a 6-9 and nine record to go. Uh, Abi and Tamawashi could now land at Maigashira 3 and Maigashira 4, whichever order you want to put them in. Uh, Maigashira 4 rank would be a little tough for whichever one of those guys gets it, but it isn't super... Cr like, that is cusp joy i think that would land i think it would be migashira 4 west and it would land you just outside of the joy which with terado fuji sounding like he's probably still going to be gone that's fine you're going to end up in the joy i think both these guys need to still be in the joy for any combination to be acceptable and so i i think that that would work it you're not getting one of these guys ending up at migashira 6 or migashira 7 so the negatives for me, the only negatives for me on this is it's just we're assuming we're opening up Komosubi slots uh, in situations where we haven't seen it happen in the past. Um, but I really feel like their hands can be forced, and that's what they have to do. Um, so I think seven is an acceptable solution, but eight lower Sanyaku Rikshi is also a possibility people throwing out there. 
we could promote Takayasu to Sekiwake. We we do need a new Ozeki, and he can't be promoted to Ozeki from Komosubi, so let's fast track an Ozeki run for him <laughs> since we're pretty desperate for that, and he's got back-to-back uh, double-digit winning Bashos. So if we have Wakatakakage, Hoshoryu, uh, Takayasu, and Shodai at Sekiwake, then we would have Kiribayama, Kotonowaka, Meisei, and Wakamoto Haru likely filling up our uh, Komosubi slots. And so what we end up with there, we still have uh, Tobizaru Daisho at Magashira 1. Uh, and then we have Mitaki Yumi still at Magashira 2. Abi or Tamawashi can get up to Magashira 2. Tamawashi or Abi would then land at Magashira 3. And that works out pretty nicely, I think, for both of those guys. I think both of those are very reasonable and respectable places for them to land. Nishiki Fuji and Ryuden would be able to move up a full rank instead of just from the west side to the east side after nine and six records. Uh, and once again, my negatives for this scenario are just we're opening up Sanyaku slight slots that precedent tells us we wouldn't really be opening up. And my actual biggest complaint with this solution is it just honestly works a little too well and makes things too easy it's i feel like it's more a solution of convenience than one that fits with recent precedent and it's far more elegant a solution than this absolute train wreck of a bonsuke deserves so i'm just gonna dismiss <laughs> it out of hand for that reason alone uh so having five or six victory in the sanyaku sl slots just creates too harsh of situations in my mind i think it's um un unreasonable demotion slash promotions for some rickshi uh if that's the solution and having eight rickshi in the sanyaku ranks is too convenient and honestly that's where i'm going to point at and say now we're creating uh new sanyaku sl slots just to make things a little bit easier for us like things things are going to be a little hard it's the bonds game they always things are always going to be a little hard to figure out. If you have eight, it's just too easy. And I think that makes it unlikely to happen. Uh, <laughs> so for me, my Goldilocks number in this prediction is going to have seven Rikshi in the lower Sanyaku ranks. Uh, effectively keeping the structure of the previous Bonske. Yeah. And, and my reasoning that I've allowed myself to use to convince myself for this, because I really hate the idea of, setting new precedent and allowing people into the Sanyaku ranks that the past couple years of data would tell us that's just not going to happen is, well, we're not creating new Sanyaku slots. We're just filling the voids of what was left before. Yeah. Al allowing the previous bonds K to flavor our next one a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Purely exactly. on shape as opposed to numbers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So now we figured out how many Rikshi we're going to have in the Sanyaku. Let's let's start placing some Rikshi on the Bonds K again. So at Sekiwake, shit. Okay, this is it's not going to be easy right off the bat because <laughs> we had it's not it's not absolutely clear who's going to be Sekiwake East. Wakataka Kage had a winning record with eight and seven, but Hoshoryu, who is Sekiwake West, was eleven and four. There is a possibility that these two could switch sides, uh, much like you see with the reordering of Ozeki based on their records in the previous Basho. Uh, we've seen it happen in the past. So when I've looked at the past 10 years of data of when a Sekiwake West had more wins than a Sekiwake East and they both had winning records, the only time that I've seen them swap places is when the Sekiwake West either won a Yusho or a June Yusho. So in Nagoya of 2018, Ichinojo was a Sekiwake East and Mitake Yumi was uh Sekiwake West. Ichinojo was eight and seven. Mitake Yumi went 13 and two, won the Yusho. On the following Bonske, they swapped places. Ichinojo dropped down to West, Mitake Yumi up to East. Just the year prior, in Haru of 2017, Tamawashi was Sekiwake East, had an eight and seven record, and Takayasu was Sekiwake West with a 12 and three record on the Natsu Basho for that year. Both of them were still in their prior spots. Um, so I think I had like one or two more cases of precedent where it kind of showed if you had that you show or June you show, you swap places with the Sekiwake East. If you didn't, then you stayed put. So because of that, and it's honestly kind of shaky because if you just go back like 
15 to 20 years than there was a case where a nine and six Sekiwake West, who obviously didn't get a Yushu or Jun Yushu, uh, jumped ahead of a eight and seven Sekiwake East. So, but I, that's okay. that's far enough in the past. I'm going to go with the more recent precedent. I'm going to say Hoshor, Hoshoryu stays at Sekiwake East, Wakakaka. Wakataka Kage stays at Sekiwake East, and then Shodai being the demoted Ozeki, he will be the lowest ranked Sekiwake. He will end up at Sekiwake 2 East. Sounds good to me. Yep. So we get down to our Komosubi ranks. Uh, I've got Kiribayama being the top ranked Komosubi. That allows him to be promoted from Komosubi West to Komosubi East after his 8-7 and seven record. Then I've got Takeyasu taking the open Komosubi West slot. Uh, I, I really don't think that they're going to give him a fast track to Ozeki by promoting him to Sekiwake. I think I think they stick with recent precedent, but the the rest of my Bonske works whether Takayasu is a Sekiwake or Komosubi. He, he, if he gets promoted to Sekiwake, rest of my Bonske still works. I'll just miss Takayasu. Um, it's if I get the overall number of Sanyaku Rikshi wrong. Like if it's actually eight Rikshi in the Sanyaku, then my entire guess to Bonske is completely aft. If it's because then everybody, yeah. even if I have them in the right order, everybody will be off by half rank. Uh, and if they yeah. if they decide to be dicks and go with five, then everybody's going to be screwed. <laughs> everybody's <laughs> already screwed on this one. This is going to be a terrible results for Guess the Bonds game. It's going to be so crazy and all over the place. The way um, they do their scoring makes it so like an issue of Sanyaku quantity somehow like completely overtakes any other consideration at all, right? Like it, yeah. if, if it's no matter what if you guessed uh seven in the top in the in the junior sanyaku and it turns out to be five you get like zero points right like everybody everybody off will be off by like a full rank for my actual prediction so yeah unless i missed somebody by a full rank i'm not gonna get a point and guess the bonds (laughs) game yeah exactly because that happened to me once uh because we like our scoring that we have did in the past and what we started uh with was just like judging how far you got everybody off from the actual order things were in didn't really care what rank they were at and so i had one where i was super accurate with the order like i only had 12 total misses across the entire order but i had guessed wrong on the number of sanyaku rikshi so my guess the bonske score i was like in the hundreds for (laughs) uh my ranking against the bonske so despite my order being very very good because I didn't have everybody at the right rank, the guess of case scores were really bad. Uh, so that's what's on the line with this one. And I think a lot of people are <laughs> going to get screwed because of that. Um, so Koto Nawaka, he easily slots in as the next Komosubi. That'll be Komosubi to East. And then the last spot in the Komosubi ranks comes down to Meisei or Wakamoto Haru, who both tied for deserving this rank. They were both previously on the East side, so we can't use that as a tiebreaker. I'm going to give it to Meisei based on joy bias. Despite Wakamoto Haru technically being in the joy lost Basho because Terano Fuji was absent, so Wakamoto Haru was in the top 16 of active Rikshi, I still think they're going to give the spot to Meisei here. So I have Wakamoto Haru uh, just missing out on becoming a Sanyaku Rikshi, and because he's not getting this slot, I'm not having him land at Mikashira 1 either uh, because we've got our dropping Komosubi, um, Tobizaru and Daisho, I have taking the Magashira one east and west slots because, as I've said multiple times, that's where a seven and eight Komosubi will land unless they're absolutely forced to go somewhere else. And a ten and five Rikshi for Magashira four isn't forcing them away from that spot. Uh, there's also possible consideration for Mitake Yumi to land at Magashira one. Um, but looking at past precedent, it looks like a Komosubi with a seven and eight record uh, usually is ranked ahead of a Sekiwake with a six and nine record. So I'm going to assume Mitake Yumi gets pushed down a little bit. So at Maigashira 2, the the next spot, the Maigashira 2 E spot, could go to three different guys Wakamoto Haru, Mitake Yumi, or Abi. I'm going with Wakamoto Haru here. He deserves to be the highest ranked of these three based on our Bonsuke math. 
I am worried about Mitaki Yumi taking the spot from I'm more worried about Mitaki Yumi taking the spot from Wakamoto Haru than I am about Abi. Um Mitaki Yumi could end up ahead of him just because of Sanyaku bias. We've seen plenty of times where these guys end up ahead of people we don't think they should. Uh, but Wakamoto Haru deserves to be two ranks ahead of Mitaki Yumi. And so I think I'm hoping that's going to be enough uh, for him to get that spot ahead of Mitaki Yumi. And I favor Wakamoto Haru over Abi because Wakamoto Haru was joy adjacent while Abi was M9. And Wakamoto Haru does deserve to be one rank ahead of Abi. Uh, so I think Wakamoto Haru would be placed ahead of Abi despite the Yusho because I really don't think the U show gives you an extra boost when it comes to your rankings. Well, this is our third one in a row where we'll be able to gather a data point for a Megashira yeah. winning the stupid U show. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, and then on the West side of the Megashira two rank, I'm going to go with Mitake Yumi here ahead of Abi. Uh, this is where I'm going to go with the dropping Sanyaku Rikshi getting preference over a rising mid Maegashira Rikshi since Abi is coming all the way from Maegashira 9. Then I'm going to assume that all Rikshi with winning records will be promoted, and that means Midori Fuji has to take the Maegashira 3 East rank as he was Maegashira 3 West and he had an 8-7 and seven record. So he just, if I'm assuming that he that eight and sevens are going to be promoted and i don't think i'm ever going to go into a bonds cave prediction assuming an eight and seven won't be promoted um unless it just absolutely blocked from happening um yeah if like all the sanyaku was in the double digits and a migashira one got an eight win or something they'd open up a new komosubi slot yeah okay i don't <sighs> We don't now, have to get into that hypothetical. Yeah, if there's but already like, four Komosubi, would they open up a fifth? That's never happened before. Hopefully it'll never – it's going to happen next Basho. It's going to um, happen next Basho. Yeah. Yep. Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, I'm just never going to go into a prediction assuming eight and seven records will not be promoted. I just – yeah. It happens too rarely to think that would happen. It, right. it would be such a break from precedent that it's not worth considering as a – But see, but line. then we – just a few bo- – <laughs> earlier this year – down in Jurio, Hide Umi had an 8-7 record from Jurio 1 West, and he didn't get a promotion at all. They just moved Ryuden, who was 9-6 and six from Jurio 3 West, ahead of him. So that that ties well, me up in knots, but once again, I'm not going to predict it. And and that happened in Jurio, so, you know, they're, they're required to be mean to guys in Jurio. Yeah, and people aren't looking as closely at Jurio. They can get away with stuff there. <laughs> yeah, they can sneak that one through. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that leaves me uh, placing Abi at Maegashira 3 West. I'm not a huge fan of having him down this low, but once again, without freezing the ranks of 8 and 7 or 9 and 6 Rikshi, we can't really get him much higher. Uh, and there is recent precedent that makes me feel a little bit better about it. Takeyasu got a 6 rank promotion after a 12 and 3 record earlier this year. So if Abi gets that too, it's not too bad. Uh, Takeyasu went Maegashira 7 to Maegashira 1 after a 12 and 3 record this year. And then we have one more slot to fill out the zone of death, to fill out the joy. That is Maegashira 4 East. And once again, assuming that a winning record guarantees a promotion, that would mean Sada Naomi needs to move from Maegashira 4 West to Maegashira 4 East after an 8-7 and seven record. So I have Maegashira uh, 4 East filled by Sada Naomi. And then just outside of the, the joy, knocking on the door there, uh, we've got two Rikshi uh, that could take the Maegashira 4 West rank. Both of them deserve to be ranked Maegashira 2. Um, those are Tamawashi and Nishiki Fuji. I'm going to go with the falling Sanyaku Rikshi over the rising mid Maegashira Rikshi every single time, especially if it would mean that dropping Tamawashi further would be setting precedent for the lowest ranking a 6 and 9 Komasubi has ever gotten at Maegashira 5. If I can avoid that, I will. So I've got Tamawashi ending up at Maegashira 4 West, which Maegashira 4 West might be the biggest drop uh Komasubi with a 6 and 9 record would ever get cuz I think uh the last time it happened they ended up at Maegashira 4 East so sure we'll we'll see um 
The next three spots are all pretty easy. We had three win- guys with winning records in a row starting at Mega Shira 5 West, which means there's only one more spot for them to go. So Nishiki Fuji and Nishikigi need to take these spots to ensure they are both promoted at all. Nishiki Fuji was 9-6 and six for Mega Shira 5 West, and Nishikigi was 8-7 and seven for Mega Shira 6 East. Uh, my, is- my only objection here would be putting them at the same rank is just criminal. I am going to mix them up all the time. <laughs> it's just, I, I, I hate it. I, I, if they were at least a different number, that made it a little easier to, they, they look nothing alike. They wrestle nothing no. alike, but their yeah. names are just, just, just inappropriately similar. Yeah. How, how dare they be, there be multiple niche keys in the same division. It would, it would like be ranking a Chio next to another Chio or a Koto next to another Koto. How could you do that? How could we live? It's just just unacceptable. Absolutely. Uh, that being said, later on down the line, we do have Koto Shoho right next to Koto Waco. <laughs> well, you know what I have to say about that? That's a six second long clip. I absolutely despise that. Uh, <laughs> I uh, knew you would. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so the... The half rank promotion would be a little rough for Nishiki Fuji. He had a nine and six record, only being promoted a half rank up to Magashira Five East. But sometimes them's the breaks. Uh, it happened to both Kota Nawaka and Tamawashi after they both had nine and six records in Natsu of this year, and they both just slid from the west side of their rank to the east side. So sometimes there's just nowhere else for you to go. And the same things. Uh, I predict is going to be happening to Ryuden, only uh, sliding over from the west side of Maegashira 6 West to the east side of Maegashira 6 East after a 9-6 and six record. Once again, there's just nowhere for him to go. In a perfect world, he would be jumping ahead of Nishikigi here. He was one spot behind Nishikigi in the rankings, and he got one more win than him. He should be jumping Nishikigi. Uh, but Can't do that breaks. unless you keep an 8-7 and seven in one spot. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So, my guess here is six west. We get like the lone reprieve. It, besides Yokozuna and Oseki, uh, my guess here is six to like my guess here, uh, ten east is like the the lone kind of easy area, easy ish area on the bonds K. Um, so my guess here is six west. We got two Rikshi vying for those spots: Hokuto Fuji and Mio Giryu. Um Hokuto Fuji was previously on the east side. Miyogiri was previously on the west side. So for me, that's pretty easy to slot Hokuto Fuji in at Maegashira 6 west. Then we get to Maegashira 7. Miyogiri is the next clear Rikshi to be ranked. So I've got him landing at Maegashira 7 east. Uh, and then we're looking at Maegashira 7 west. Uh, there are two Rikshi that deserve to go to this spot. Uh, both of them deserve to be Maegashira 8, so one of them's going to get a little bit of an overpromotion. Very, very rare on this Bonds K. Um, and, but there is a shot of a 4 and 11 Ichinojo landing here after falling from Maegashira 2. Uh, he deserves to be Maegashira 9, but I could see him landing ahead of a couple of rising uh, lower Bonds K Rikshi. So, Let's say I give Ichinojo some joy bias and say he deserves to be ranked one rank higher than the math would normally say. Say he deserves to be ranked Maegashira 8 alongside Onosho and Oho. I'm still going to go with Onosho at Maegashira 7 West since of these three, he is the only one that was previously on the east side. Um, Still feel like Ichinojo could easily land here, but I'm going to be nice to Onosho. I'll go with Onosho here. That that east side bias is is one of your rules of thumb, but that's one of the weaker ones, right? It's one of the that's no, that's been no? pretty strong recently. Okay. I I it it took me far too long to kind of catch on to the east west thing and how the order how that affects the orders of things, but since I've been keeping an eye on that, that has uh been a fairly strong rule for the most part, I would say. Hmm. Okay. So 
I am going to go with Joy Bias and put Ichi Nojo ahead of the Rising Oho at Maegashira 8 East, despite Oho deserving to be ahead of Ichi Nojo. Uh, but don't feel too bad for Oho. He's still getting a full five rank promotion that you would expect for a 10 and 5 Rikshi uh, if he lands at the Maegashira 8 West spot. So Oho's not hurting for anything if we give a little Joy Bias to Ichi Nojo there. Sure. Um, I have debated about putting the 4 and 11 Ura, who was ranked Maegashira 3, ahead of Oho as well. But Oho deserves to be two ranks ahead of Ura, so I'm going to say that's not quite enough for Joy Bias to overcome. I'm really nervous about this spot. I do think there's a good shot of both Ichidojo and Ura landing ahead of these guys. And I'm pretty... I haven't entered my guess the bods k guess i'm pretty close to putting ichi no joe ahead of oh no show here jake should i switch things up yes i don't know what do you want from me i don't mm. you know actually i have the perfect thing to say no absolutely not we're moving on <laughs> i'm gonna leave it as is <laughs> there you go i had to force your hand and make you realize which one you actually wanted yeah uh well i want to move on and well, you know, you, That's you know what the coin, you know what you want the coin to land once it's in the air, right? So once I'm on my way to clicking the burp button, you got to make your choice. Yeah, and honestly, <laughs> if if I were to change, then I know it would be what it originally was. So I'm just gonna stick with what it, what I have. All right, there you go. Magashira nine. Uh, we got Ura. He's tied with two other Rikshi for deserving this spot, but since he was in the joy uh, and they were not, I'm giving him the tiebreaker in this scenario to take the Magashira 9 East rank. Uh, and then for Magashira 9 West, uh, two Rikshi that deserve to be slotted next, Endo and Takanosho. Uh, both were previously on the east side, so there's no easy tiebreaker for those guys there. Uh, looking at past precedent would tell us when two Rikshi are dropping in the mid Maegashira ranks to defer to the Rikshi that was previously ranked higher. So in that case, that would be Endo, who was previously ranked higher than Takanosho. So I have Endo landing at Maegashira 9 West. Then we get down to the bottom of the Bonds K. And since I had Takanosho losing the tiebreaker for the Magashira 9 West spot, I have him landing at Magashira 10 East. And so now we get to Magashira 10 and we're getting back into we're getting into another spot where there's just too many Rikshi and not enough spots uh to put them in, and some people are gonna be over demoted. So Vying for the Magashira 10 West spot, we have a group of four Rikshi to choose from. All of them deserve to be ranked Magashira 11. So one's going to get a slight over promotion. Two are going to be ranked exactly right. And one's going to be uh, get an over demotion of one. So of that group of four, only one Rikshi was previously on the east side. All the others were on the west side. So I'm going to have Awayama sliding over from Maegashira 10 East to Maegashira 10 West after a 7-8 and eight record, taking taking the lead in that group of uh, four Rikshi. Then at Maegashira 11, for, on the east side, of the remaining three Rikshi that deserve Maegashira 11, only one of them had a winning record, and that was Hira de Umi, who was 10-5 and five for Magashira 16. And when we get towards the bottom of the Bonds K, when you have a rising Rikshi uh, tied with a dropping Rikshi, uh, the rising Rikshi tends to win that battle. So I'm going to go with Hira de Umi at the Magashira 11 East rank. And then we are looking at two Rikshi for the Magashira 11 West spot, uh, both deserve the same exact rank based on the math. Both had losing records. Uh, whoever is not placed here will end up at Magashira 12 and be over demoted by a rank. And similar to Endo versus Takanosho earlier, I'm going to go with the Rikshi that was previously ranked higher as the tiebreaker between the two. So that means I've got Tochi Noshin landing at Magashira 12 West. I want to clarify on that one, because that seems like you're using exactly contradictory rules for those two. Um, How do you mean? You, you said uh, towards the bottom of the Bonds K, when you have a rising Rikshi tied with a dropping Rikshi, tend to go with the rising Rikshi. Yes. Meaning you're deferring to the one with the lower rank at originally. Yes. Yeah. And then next you said, 
for a tiebreaker. You're going with the guy who is previously higher ranked. I I think it's to to the untrained ear. Those sound like opposite things, <laughs> but it's different situations. You have sure. one rising and one dropping, and the other situation is two Rikshi dropping. Um, I see. Okay, that makes sense then. So if it's if they're if they're both dropping, and they deserve to be tied, that's when you'll defer to the higher rank. Yeah, I I think the order of operations for the bottom of the bonds cake goes i think east west side first uh record second highest rank third is kind of my guess and so when east west side is the same um record well then record you would go with the guy who was previously lower ranked because uh he wouldn't be dropping as far but it's just what i've seen in the past this is I'm just going with precedent that I've seen. So no, I, I, I I misunderstood there, but yeah, having those back to back with what sounded like complete opposites. I I just wanted to clarify, but that makes a little sense. Yeah. I think it's just slightly different situations. They treat slightly different or maybe it they're tied. Who, who the hell knows? (laughs) They could do, they could do whatever they want with those four and, It'll make some modicum of sense. Hopefully. They could straight flip a coin or flip several coins to determine it. And yeah. we we would all be like, mm, yes, more data, more precedent. <laughs> like like John Gunning has said, I've probably put more thought into the who is going to land at Mike Shear 11 than the Bonds K committee did. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. And he didn't say that about me specifically. He just said the people doing Guess the Bonds K probably put yeah, more yeah, the, the thought Western into, audience. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so then we get to Magashira 12 and the odd guy out from that group of four that gets over demoted. I have being Chio Shoma, um, which like I said before, I, I rarely feel like we ever see over demotions at the bottom of the bonds. Okay. So we're going to be seeing this a few times as we go on. It's just kind of weird and feels wrong. <laughs> I just think if we went with five or six, Rikshi, this would be even worse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so Magashira 12 West, in order to ensure a promotion for Okinoumi, who had a promotion for Okinoumi, who had a eight and seven record for Magashira 13 East, he needs to end up at the Magashira 12 West spot. So that's where I've got Okinoumi landing. And then at Magashira 13, uh, there's two guys that are going to land at this spot. It's either going to be, Kot- it's going to be Koto Shoho and Kakayaki, uh, who should be splitting the Magashira 13 rank. Uh, Kageyaki was on the east side. Kota Shoho was previously on the west side. So I am putting Kageyaki at Magashira 13 east and Kota Shoho at Magashira 13 west. I am a little curious about this one because Kota Shoho was 7 and 8 for Magashira 11 west. So this would be a two rank demotion for him. So I'm curious if they try to prevent Kota Shoho from being further over demoted by putting Kageyaki behind him. Uh, So he only drops a rank and a half, and then Kageyaki rises. uh, That'd be a rank and a half for Kageyaki as well. Um, So kind of stop Kageyaki's promotion in favor of helping Koto Shoho out. I don't know if that's how they'll work. I Obviously not leaning towards that because I'm going against that, but it's something I'm interested to see how they handle. Because based on like my tiebreaker situation, Kageyaki has the east side over the west side. Kageyaki has the winning record over the losing record. So it's just an, a matter of does the Bosque committee want to prevent uh, some over promotions uh, at the expense of keeping a guy further down the Bosque than his record would deserve. Gotcha. Magashira 14, we've got Kota Waco. He's the next clear Rikshi to be placed. There's nobody around him that deserves it. Uh, but he, he's also getting over demoted as he was seven and eight for Magashira 12, but there's just nowhere to put him until the Magashira 14 East spot. So another over demotion for a seven and eight record. I mean, hell, most of the time we're we're wondering if these guys are gonna get demoted at all in this range yeah. of the bus gang. He had a Doomy last time was seven and eight. Micah Shear 16 West, the last guy out of the Bonds K. They didn't demote him after a seven and eight record. And look at him this time. He had 10 and five record. He's going to end up around Micah Shear 10, 11, 12. This is so weird having like the top of the Bonds K be the part that's too crowded. 
you know, and the bottom like being just there. also too crowded. Well, too crowded in a different way, I guess. Um, yeah. But like normally, normally at the top of the bonds, you don't have nearly so many guys in the joy who have good records. You know, and, and now we're seeing like the weird. Like anti ripple go all the way down to the <laughs> bottom here where things are normally a, a lot simpler. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so the Magashira 14 West spot, the next Rikshi that deserves to be ranked is Tsudu Gisho. But the problem for him is he would be a Jurio promotee. So we know that he Ooh, likely that. won't. Yeah, we know that he likely won't be the next Rikshi to be placed. Unfortunately for Tsudu Gisho, Ichi Yamamoto and Azumaru both deserve to be only one rank lower than him. And the rule that we've been rolling pretty pretty good with for the past year is that Jurio promotees need to deserve to be ranked at least two ranks higher than Amaka Uchi Rikshi in order to be ranked ahead of them. It seems arbitrary, and it is, but we've been doing that for the past year, and we've been nailing the order of the Jurio guys, so it works. <laughs> so mm -hmm. for that reason, I've got Ichi Yamamoto falling from Magashira 14 East to Magashira 14 West after a seven and eight record. And I have Azumaru dropping from Magashira 14 West to Magashira 15 East after a seven and eight record for him. So now that there is no other Rikshi that deserves or Tsudugisho is after we place Ichi Yamamoto and Azumaru, Tsudugisho is now three ranks clear of the next Makauchi <laughs> Rikshi that would deserve to be placed. Now we can probably safely place Tsudugisho at Magashira 15 West. Uh, this would be his fifth trip up to the top division. And uh, just for reference, Tsudugisho is 10 and 5 from Jurio 3. Mm, okay. Yeah. So that is a decent sized jump for him. Yeah. So now there are three Jurio Rikshi that all deserve to be ranked Magashira 16. They're the next ones that deserve to be ranked. But unfortunately for them, there is one more falling Makauchi Rikshi that deserves to be only one rank lower than them. And <laughs> one rank lower than them, if you're a Makauchi Rikshi, is basically it's one five, rank higher than them. <laughs> one rank higher than them, exactly. <laughs> Uh, so I think there are some people that might have him falling down to Jurio, but not in my bonds, K. I think his win on day 15 will save him, and I have Takata Fuji landing at Magashira 16 East. After he was, I think, 3-12 and 12 for Magashira 8, yes. So very, terrible. <laughs> very terrible, but not terrible enough for Jurio, at least in my prediction. If yeah. he had lost to Kakayaki, on day 15, he would have been gone. <laughs> so that means we have three Jurio Rikshi battling out for the last two Makuuchi spots, which means somebody is going to be the odd man out. Those three are Chiyomaru, who was eight and seven from Jurio One West, Mitoryu, who was nine and six from Jurio Three West, and Aqua, who was 10 and five from Jurio Five East. Aqua being the only Rikshi in that group that was previously on the east side is my top choice, and he had the best record among those Rikshi. So he is my top choice to take one of those two uh, final Makuuchi spots. So I have him landing at Magashira 16 West. And so my version of the Bonske with seven Rikshi in the Sanyaku ranks needs to go down to Magashira 17 East. So despite the fact that we have the same number of lower Sanyaku ranks, we did lose one Rikshi in the uh, upper, the champion level ranks of Ozeki and Yokozuna with Shodai dropping. So we have nine Rikshi. I have nine Rikshi in the Sanyaku as opposed to 10 in the previous Basho. So we need to drop down one more rank to accommodate having 42 Rikshi in the top division. So I have that battle going down between Chiyomaru and Mitoryu. And when I'm doing a tiebreaker between two rising Rikshi, the rule I like to use is the one with the better record. Uh, so that means I have Mitoryu taking the final spot in the top division at Magashira 17 East. And as I mentioned uh, probably 10, 15 minutes ago, there is recent precedent for this. As a couple of Basho go, Hideda Umi and Ryuden filled the same exact roles and records that Chiyomaru and Mitoru currently fill. 
and Ryudin ended up jumping over the eight and seven jury one West Rikshi uh, to take the jury one East slot. And like I said, they believed in that so much. They didn't move uh he didn't Umi at all after having a winning record. So I think Chiyomaru will be the odd man out here. I think he will slide from Juria one West to Juria one East and Mitoru will jump over him and take the last Makuuchi spot. Hmm. So I think we got through all of that in a little under an hour. So despite having quite a bit to go through, Jake, you, you, stayed in your lane you let me get it all out of my system and and we'll have this wrapped up nice and tidy before nine o'clock easily so that, yeah. that's my gift to you this christmas season yeah you know i feel i feel full you know that was that was a very filling bond no don't and don't do it our yeah, devotees just, down i'm just so church. relaxed that no. like you know i gotta let something out of me here <laughs> all right ryan's got the headphones off so we'll wait till he puts them back on I mean, I can still hear you. All oh, right. Well, then you can still hear this. I'll send my compliments. Or you know I'll send your how, compliments to my brother. Do you know how many people are going to never listen to this podcast again? For at least one. At least yeah. one person will <laughs> have heard that and be like, you know what? That was the last straw. You know what? The, it, you know, it's, it's a non-zero number. No, I'm done number. with these guys. It's definitely a non-zero <laughs> number. I, I always try to like come in like with some way to entertain myself beyond just the Bonske. Just, you know, just as like I, I want to have some backup plan for when you go on it, when you when you have like a lot to go over. And you know what? This this one might be my uh, my 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 coup de gras. This is this is my 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 best one yet. Hard disagree. <laughs> I, I promise I won't do any more until right no, I'm kidding. Just go ahead. Thank you. All right. Uh, so we have three new Rikshi coming up to the top division from Jurio, but we're only going to have two Makauchi Rikshi dropping down to Jurio. Uh, that is because we had Chio Tairyu retire in the middle of the Basho. So one of the three spots taken by Jurio Rikshi is being uh, is filling that Chio Tairyu spot. So the two Rikshi that I have being demoted down to the Jurio division, there's no debate about this. Uh, Atami Fuji had a 4-11 and record for Magashir 15. Tadatsuyoshi had the historic 0-15 record while competing in every single match uh, for Magashir 16. So those guys are going down. There's no way around it. And there's not really even... Well, I guess the other borderline case would be Takuda Fuji. He could possibly sure. go down, but I, I don't think that's going to happen. So there there well, aren't really any strong enough promotion cases to like, you know, really we, we would have to like really I mean we got we got Chiyomaru, I suppose, but like yeah, even then that's I don't know. I, I, I feel like you, you were spot on when you when you were like, Yeah, he he was in the upper division, he won two that rank last rule. two rank rule, he you know, he won his last match. Yeah, I I think it would be, I don't know. I I if we're if we're gonna get to the the thing that I think you got wrong, I think Chio Tyre is gonna come back. <laughs> I think that might be the one. You know, I think he might just see like what what a mess this Bonske is and be like, no, nah, I'm coming back. I honestly don't think that's allowed. <laughs> Almost certainly not. Right. <laughs> I it's not, it's not a situation where you can just be like, hey, I want my job back. It's not Walmart. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. So what there's plenty to choose from on this one, Jake. What do you think I got wrong on this Bonds K? No. Nah, I I think it's perfect. Liar. No, I, I yeah. <laughs> you you already spent enough time on on like the number of guys in the Sanyaku. Like that's that's clearly the spot that we're watching the most, yeah. like to see like where we actually see what's going on. But I also think um uh, if I have to pick one other spot that I'll be keeping an eye on, uh, I think it might actually be Abi, um, because I think that's one of the things that uh, even in your own predictions, he varies. You think by like he's four too ranks. high? No, I. <laughs> what? No, he, he varies by like four ranks, only depending on the number of Sanyaku slots in your even in your your prediction. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that he's one of the guys that is like 
if we have to promote and we have to demote eight and seven records or seven and eight records that that can swing him like four ranks so like i i'm I'm really curious to see where that's going to go uh and i would i i am interested to see how regardless of where he ends up i want to see how you analyze it and how you take away uh information from that i think that's going to be fun yep absolutely yeah there's i don't know i'm I'm waffling again on the ichi no joe ura being ranked ahead of those guys i don't know i might i might go ahead and change my guess the bonds prediction from that i'm going to do a little bit more research into those spots <laughs> and i might change my prediction yeah. but for now i'm going to keep it all right uh now is your if you're listening to this like a day or two after this uh this podcast releases now is your last chance to do our popularity poll for the year end of 2022 uh it's just a quick two to three minute survey uh where you tell us who your favorite rickshi are who your least favorite rickshi is and then just some uh miscellaneous other questions that we're interested in knowing uh yeah. we're gonna it, be it just helps us shape our coverage for you know what stuff we cover what you know what demographics actually listen listen to our show so that we can you know know what stuff we should emphasize and all that that's not why i do it i'm mostly just curious who people like and just kind of how, <laughs> how... Well, yeah <laughs> my original thing the my original motivation for doing it was tochi no Shin because he's always been uber popular and in 2018 we, i think we might have started in 2019 i think 2019 we started and i think that's when he this lost is our his, fourth year yeah yeah and that's when he lost his ozeki rank so i was curious is his performance diminishing going to decrease the his fandom and how many people root for him and so that's kind of what that's that's the main thing i'm tracking is just like is and obviously popularity is going to play a big role in or uh, winning is going to play a big role in popularity, but I'm kind of trying to find, is there guys that can buck that trend and like how all that goes. So just kind of trying to find trends yeah. in popularity. I don't, I'm still going to talk about whoever I want to talk about. We're going to talk no, about the Sanyaku right. and, and... <laughs> you're, you're, you're right. I mean, like, I'm not saying that like we only care about it from like a business perspective or something. Like, of course yeah. the, the information itself has is, is valuable and is fun to talk about, but like, Feed you know, my it, curiosity. It, like, let's say Chio Shoma goes from least popular last year to most popular this year. All right, fine. Maybe we'll talk about him a little bit more, right? You know, yeah. like, clearly we have to figure out why, because <laughs> yeah. why. But, like, if that, uh, you taking know, a look like that at happen, the early numbers, <laughs> that's not the case. No, I'm not really worried about it happening. I'm yeah. just saying, like, you know, if there are, if there's clear trends of, you know, wrestlers that we talk about too much uh, and nobody else except us likes them. Yeah, we'll keep talking about them, but like maybe we'll also toss in some people that we don't talk about often or something. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so if you're listening to this on Friday or Saturday, go ahead and take that poll uh, because when the weekend is over, we're going to be shutting down that poll so that I can start going through all of the data. And as it stands right now, we are planning on recording our 2022 popularity poll results, uh, that podcast uh this time next week. So hopefully yeah. by next Friday, everybody has the results of the popularity poll. And we have fulfilled one of our promises of getting that done in a timely fashion this year. <laughs> yeah. We only got one more with the Sumo Award show. And I'll let everybody know I feel perfectly healthy. As of now, I am not sick at all. So I've got <laughs> all the energy in the world to get this done. Like yeah. I was telling Jake, I, I stayed up till midnight to get this outline done last night. Uh, so I'm going to do what it takes to get this stuff done this <laughs> yeah. year. Yeah. And a, as long as my baby doesn't show up early, uh, our goal yeah. is some to of these have... podcasts might be sans Jake. Cause he might be new yeah. Papa, but yeah. also I might straight up. I might straight up take January off. We're going to see what has to happen. But regardless, our goal is to have this episode, have the popularity poll episode, the uh, end of the year award show, all of these ready for you to put in your headphones and ignore your family hanging out at Christmas. Yes. That is, uh, that's kind of the timeline we're on. There'll also be an amateur award show somewhere in there too, but that one is a little bit more freewheeling. Not quite sure when that one's happening yet. And I will grief you a little bit, Jake, if you miss any podcasts due to your baby, because I had Riley right at the beginning of September when the Aki Basha started. I didn't miss any coverage. And honestly, that's because 
newborn infants really don't need a whole lot of like you can spare two hours (laughs) you also don't do the editing so there's that (laughs) oh what's that another 15 minutes on an easy episode sure but (laughs) oh man anyways though Let's get out of here. If you enjoyed this podcast, you could leave us a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast listening service, or you could sign up at our Patreon, Grand Sumo Breakdown. You can sign up at a $1 level or a $3 level. Um, wh- uh, Sorry, you you threw in Patreon. It, that, that's not on my list. I got thrown off my <laughs> thrown off my rhythm there. Uh, GrandSumoBreakdown.wordpress.com. Go check out the American Sumo Newsletter. Email us comments, questions, and corrections, grandsumobreakdown at gmail.com. And voicemail, 805-613-SUMO, 805-613-7866. Get on that our show. physically pained me, you reading that backwards. Because <laughs> it's always like, yeah, because always it's, uh, and you can leave us a voicemail at 805-613-7866. That's 805-613-SUMO. And you reading it SUMO first and then the 7866, like, physically hurt me. <laughs> also, Jake, when can we expect the December edition of the Amateur <laughs> SUMO newsletter? I Damn it. You, you brought that up. I was going to burp at you again. Um, <laughs> no. Uh, that one, uh, it is supposed to come out within the next week. Um, but we're compiling things and you know what? There's really nothing that's going to happen between now and the end of the year sumo wise. So if that doesn't come out right away, then you'll just have to wait, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) It's really hard. I bit off more than I could chew for the winter here with, you know, (laughs) baby (laughs) creation. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) I'm doing my best here, guys. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully your wife can keep everything inside for the next couple uh, weeks yeah. so we can get our year end stuff done and have I a keep full telling crew. her just clench, honey. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Until next week. Uh, <laughs>